When we could finally read for ourselves, we opened up the Bible, we started to see. Got to see. But and then it's like, this, this Bible's talking about something, right? About. Go back to 45. They kept the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 45. Y'all listen to this again. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee. It says you ain't got no choice. It's going to overtake. Exactly. All, everybody that tried to run from these curses, it's they all got caught. It's going to happen. This started way before we were born, right? Yeah, this right was written right. thousands of years ago, read. Doing Till it. thou be destroyed. Till thou be destroyed. Watch this, watch this. How do you know you destroyed? What's your nationality? Come on. My family. Your nationality. I'm I'm I'm, I'm American. You're American. I'm African. That means he's destroyed. I'm destroyed. What did God call him? What does God call him? So when they took the chains off our wrists, off our took the shackles off our feet, took the collars off our necks, because they're all they're all right represented right here. But now all that stuff disappeared off of us. And they say, y'all are free. Why we ain't going nowhere? Yeah, why we still in bondage? We're still in bondage, right? But we need permission to lead the, to lead the states. We need papers. No papers are called passports. All that, all that stuff, right? So, but for you to know, you didn't know who you were. You thought you was an African-American or a Negro or, or some type of American. But you ain't. Nope. Because God calls you Judah. Judah. You from the nation of Israel. So you've been an Israelite the whole time, calling yourself an African American, Section nine or a caller, Section or a Negro, nine Section who? Sixty nine years. I think. Sixty nine years. You've been the wrong nationality. It's been written in the Bible the whole time. The whole time is the whole time you've been alive because this Bible thousands of years old. Your nationality been sitting there, and it, and it, it gives a description of what's gonna happen to the children of God, and you fit the description. Keep reading. Till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You didn't listen to God's voice. He gave us his commandments because he made his children different than everybody else on earth. He made them smarter. He made them stronger. He made them wiser. Now, all of that. That's pronounced in our nation. Did you notice one of the things that happened right after they released us from slavery? The United States of America had all these inventions to show up. Who were those inventions invented by? The free people that just got released from slavery. They started inventing all kinds of stuff. But the white man started taking credit for all of it. Keep reading. To keep his commandments. We failed to keep the commandments. Read. And his statutes, uh -huh. which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So when we realized we were going through these things that the, that the Bible was talking about, we were supposed to think about it like, well, that sounds familiar. That sounds like black people. That sounds like Hispanic people. That sounds like Native American people. Right. All these different things that the Bible says are going to happen to the children of God happen to people I know. Right? Right. And we were supposed to wonder about it. Right? Like if I look over there and say, look at that sign. Well, art and community come together. You look at that sign like, what that mean? You were supposed to do the same thing when you read that sign that you do when you read the Bible. They say, this happened to God's children. I wonder who they are. And you start putting two to two together like, what is it say? That sounds like me and my family. Wait, that sounds like the whole hood. What is going on here? Somebody done be lying to us. Here we go. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder, uh -huh. and upon thy seed forever. We can't escape it. It's on all our seed. When y'all decide to have children, you got your children, right? Yeah, I got eight of them. You got eight of them. And do all, all eight of them know they're the children of God? Some of them do. Some of them do? I got one. I just buried him sad. Uh-huh. 42 years old. Did he, did, he, did he repent before he go? Did he know he was an Israelite before he went? No, he died from a heart attack. Huh? Died from a heart attack? Lord willing, he repented before he left. But this is something we're all supposed to be taught. All of this we're all supposed to be taught from as babes. A lot of times people will walk up and say, well, I, I, gotta, I gotta go watch my children. He's like, go get your children and bring them back. Because the same message I'm giving to you, they need to know also. And you older guys, what y'all say? Hey, these young folks, they need this message. This message is for you also. Because you never taught it. Did you? Huh? You never talked it to nobody. I ain't never talked to nobody. You ain't never talked this message to anybody. So you you require the same message. Yes, That's I what I'm saying. I ain't gonna lie to you. Right. I ain't. Right. I didn't do it, but I always was in the church. Yeah. So I saw my mom and dad. Uh huh. You know, well, and what I'm saying right now, I'm not I'm not disregarding anything your mom and daddy taught you. But what I am gonna tell you, that what they taught you was wrong. It ain't what the Bible taught you. What mom and daddy taught you. 
is what the white man taught them. Because when you was growing up, you thought Christ looked just like that. Right. Tell me I'm wrong. You right. All right, you thought Christ looked like that. So mom and daddy taught you a lie and you didn't even know it. But back in their day, back in their day. Uh-huh. What? Back in their day, uh -huh. my mama, my granddad, uh -huh. my grandma, they didn't say prayer. They, they don't want to do that. Uh-huh. Amen. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Where they learn that from? Huh? Where they learn that from? The white man. Thank you. Can you read? White man. Exactly. Verse 47. Uh-huh. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So gladness of heart, what that mean? Every time I do a commandment, the simplest of commandments, like for instance, God told me not to shave. It's in the Bible, right? Hey, bro, step up. Step up. Right here. What's your name, bro? Anthony? My name is Aaron. How you doing? Hey, we teach our people who they are according to the Bible. Now look at this sign right here. Tell me your nationality according to the Bible. Just go read it. Go read it. You want to know who you are, right? You want to know what God called you, right? You see us all over? What's your nationality? No, you, don't, you ain't paying attention then. Look at the sign, bro. Go look at the sign. Yo, find out what's your nationality according to the Bible. We're going to keep reading while you find that out. Read. With joyfulness and with gladness of heart. We got to be glad for everything God gave us. A lot of times we take credit from God and give it to ourselves. We take glory, right? Hey, bro. Hey, Gad. Native American. Like when we think we could jump so high, right? We think we're the only ones on the planet that could do it at time. We take all the credit. Don't give God none of it. We don't even consider that we his people and that's why we can jump so high. That's why we can run so fast. That's why we invent things. That's why we're wise when we get older. Because we done went through things and we got things to tell the younger people on how to rebuild the community and make it better, right? We the leaders. They supposed to be the followers. Who's supposed to be the followers? The young kid come up under. Right, right. That's what the, that's what the, that's what the scripture say. We done been there. We try to tell them something to help them to go where we, uh -huh. where we at. Do you really want them to end up where you at? How old are you? 69. You're 69. You still work? Yeah. You want them to end up where you at? I want them to follow me. No, they don't want to follow you, man. No. I'm going to tell you right now. Well, how many of y'all want to work till you're 69? They don't want to follow you, bro. They don't want to hear that wisdom. <laughs> you're, you're not supposed to be still working at 69. You're supposed to pay attention when you was younger, so you'll be, you be done working. And then you can teach them the right things to do. You understand? Read this. You still working too? For the abundance of all things, uh -huh. therefore shalt thou serve thine enemy. So when, when, when they brought out earlier, the brother brought out, you want to serve? You're going to serve your enemies, right? So name something where you don't serve your enemy for. Name one thing. I'll wait. They ain't going to think of nothing. Go ahead. Clubbing? Your enemy built the clubs. They financed the clubs. The taxes go back to your enemy. So tell me where you where you go, where you don't, you don't, do, you don't serve your enemy. There ain't nothing, right? Because the Bible said there wasn't going to be nothing. So the Bible's a true book. Let's read it. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, uh -huh. which the Lord shall send against thee. And who sent our enemies against us? Did y'all catch that part? Who, who, who sent their enemies against us? Anybody catch it? They called it. Anthony called it. Read it again. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So God sent them to us. God sent that sword to us. He sent that belt to us. He sent that stick to us. And we're still stuck underneath that, that enemy to this day. Y'all understand that? All because we wouldn't serve the Lord our God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Read. In hunger. Uh -huh. And in thirst. Uh -huh. And in nakedness. So that drink you just got, where'd you get it from? Uh, uh, no, he didn't get it from God. Who owned the stove? And, oh. The white man. All right. And the drink itself, the syrup and everything that came into the store for them to sell it to you, who made that? White man. You see? See how this goes? Those clothes you're wearing, sis. Who, who made those? You see where it's going? The glasses you're wearing, bro. Who made those? You see where it's going? Name something the white man did not create and you didn't buy it from him. That's what the scripture is telling you. Because you would not listen to the laws of God. Y'all understand? Because the Israelites would not listen, right? So we're now cursed. So everybody walk around thinking they're free. But y'all just, just deduce that from reading the scriptures. Everything that I spend my money for was created by my enemy. You can't name you can't name one of y'all your own places. You can't name a brother with his own field making linen, and you can go there and go buy some clothes. You can't name him. The white man, 
bad enough to hate you. You're, you're, because he's your enemy and God said he's going to go through that. Read. Right? And in want of all things. Where you get your birth certificate from? White man. That's certificate when you get rid of baby grandma. White man. You see where it's going? When you need to buy that casket, where you getting from? White man. Y'all see how this go? In birth and in life. Where you buy, where you where, where you have kids at? The hospital, right? Who owns the hospital? Y'all see how this going? Yeah. It's a problem, isn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't it be easier to keep the commandments of God than to go through this for another 400 years? It would be easier. That's so you guys are pretty sure right now that you are the children of God. We just went through some curses. Not all the curses. We went through some, and he was like, if it happened to anybody, we hit, right? So now let's let's get some laws so we can understand what simple laws we've been breaking. Let's get it. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel. I'm talking to the children of Israel right now. Right. The Bible says speak to y'all, read. And bid them, command them, that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. God said that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment. This is simple law. It's the fact that it was always hidden from you because you never opened up the Bible to read it for yourself. You go to church on Sunday, you listen to the pastor. The pastor's only there for your money, which he calls tithes. Well, it was never money. Tithes was always food and drink. Yep. It was never money. But you go in that church anyway, and you listen to him pull out random scriptures and give you his understanding so you keep filling up his offering bowls with his tithes money. So he go out there and buy a, 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 a Lexus or a Beamer or something, whatever he want to buy, right? Yeah, whatever he want to buy. You right? Right? You right. So you never heard this, but I'm gonna explain to you right now. Fringes, you see this man in purple, you see, this, you see these little things on the bottom of our shirts, right? Right. Those are called fringes. This is, a, this is the commandment of God. That's right. So that means God gave us a dress code. I know it looks fly, don't it? You're like, man, these, these brothers always got these little things on the bottom of their shirts. It look good. And it's not, and we wear them all the time. It's not just when we're in purple. We were walking around like y'all. Like, like we would we be wearing fringes. And well, sometimes the fringes matches our outfit. We That's coordinate. Right. You understand that? Yeah. Here we And bid them that they make them fringes <clears throat> in the borders of their garments. So it says if you had on a dress, it would be on the end, at, end of your dress, right? Throughout their generation. Uh -huh. And that they put. <clears throat> hold on, hold on. What is a generation? Throughout our generations, what does that mean? What were you mean? Nah. Say again? When we was together? No. Try again. Not, not just your entire life, but whose entire life? As long as you're throughout your generation, as long as you are, as long as you are generating, as in you're having children. Are we still here? We're still here. So our forefathers that this was read to, we're still here. So as long as we keep generating, that's what the law just stipulated. That means forever. It's never going to go away. That means we always were supposed to wear these fringes. It was always our dress code. We was always fresh. Red. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. If you look around, you see all of us got a ribbon of blue. It doesn't have to be this shade of blue. It could be different shades of blue. But it does have to be blue. Y'all understand that? Read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them. Watch this, watch this, this is, this is too easy. So, I look upon them, and I remember all the commandments of God, and I do them. How is that, how is that possible? That all I do is look at my fringe, and all of a sudden I remember a commandment. Say I was a thief, or a shoplifter. I walk in the store, and I'm thinking about just swiping like, I don't know, a honey bun off the shelf or something. Or a jungle juice. I don't even know if they make that anymore. I'm pretty old. <laughs> nope. nope. But say I, I, I had the intention or the incline to want to go and swipe that thing off the shelf. To put it away, why well, I got to go past? I got to go past my fringes to put it away. So I'm going to look at it like, now she's not still. Let me put it back on the shelf. I ain't got the money for it. You see that? Now, for instance, let me, let me get another one so y'all see another example of Dura 2025. We're on 20, 25. Here we go. We're going to show you another important example of those fringes. Now listen up to this. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Break it out. The woman. The who? The woman. Sis, what's your name? Julia. Julia? Julia. Delia. Your woman? How old are you? 21? 22. 22. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Keep reading. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a man cannot put on a woman's garment, nor can a woman put on 
A man. What is a man wear that women should not wear? Yep. Hey. Hmm. What is it that men wear that a woman should not wear? Pants. I'm asking the woman, y'all. What is it that men wear? Your shorts is right. What's it, what's it, what, what is it short for? What's the short for shorts mean? Huh? No. Short pants. Women should not wear pants. All the men are wearing pants, right? Nobody's out here wearing a skirt. Right? So women should not be wearing pants, right? Here we go. And men should not be wearing skirts. Yeah. So if you if you were dressed appropriately and you had on a dress and you was following that law that said you had to wear fringes, when you walked out the house, or you checked yourself out before you walked out the house, you looked in the mirror, it's like, where's my fringes? Oh, I don't have on a dress. But God said I'm supposed to have on a dress. Because God gave us a dress code. Get out. Read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Hey, bro. Hey, where, where you leaving? I'm coming back. Hey, where back. you going? I'm coming come back. On, come on, come back. I'm coming back. Hey, what, what are you going for? It's still going to be there. But we'll keep teaching. So when, when you um, abomination, what is an abomination to God? When the uh, things that he did most of the way. That's an abomination, right? To God, that's an abomination. So you ever seen something so disgusting that it make you throw up a little bit? Yes. Yeah. And you taste that taste, yes. that disgusting flavor that's in the back of your mouth? Yes. God just called you that. Like you see a dog throw up and lick up his own spit. That makes you want to go. What was that, right? That's what God sees when he sees a woman with pants on. When he sees a man, when he when he sees uh, what, what's what's the man's name? Uh, he got all the movies and stuff. What's his name? Oh, okay. Tyler Perry. When you see Tyler Perry in the dress, that's what God. That's what, do, that's what he does. That's, that's what we're going. Say again. Right, read, read it. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, and verse 4. Uh -huh. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants the prophets. God sent the prophets out before y'all today, right? Read. Rising early and sending them, uh -huh. saying, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. God hates abominations. He hates them. He don't want to see them on his children. You got children, you don't want to see them in something weird or nasty, all right? Or in a bad situation. Because you care about your children, right? God is the same way. He doesn't want to see the abominations because he hates them. Uh, go back. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Uh, that's all abomination. Hey, um, take a look at the sign right here real quick. Look at the nationality according to the Bible. I am an American hey. Christian. I ask you your nationality, not your religion. So what's your nationality according to this sign right here? That would put me... Hey, um, First Timothy 2 and 9. American flag, West Indies flag. Hey, so I, I, I circle 4. What? A circle four. You circle, yeah, no, it's impossible. No, yeah, real, real I am. Um, hey, John, go in the Bible. Okay, uh, we're not, we can't debate my DNA. I do have a, a legitimate question. Can you I debate do, God? No, sir. Numbers 118. I do have a legitimate question. All right, all right, hold on. I'll stop time. I'm going to show you something real quick. And, uh, I'm, so we can edify all these people right behind you. Right? right. Numbers 118. Right. Hey, 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 yo. Listen, listen to this. Because the brother here says that he's four different nationalities, right? Are y'all listening? Yes. He thinks he's four different nationalities. That means mixed, right? He thinks he's mixed. We're going to read the Bible and see what God says about mixed. Read. All right. Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18. Read it out. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. On the first day of the second month, read. And they declared their pedigrees. What is a pedigree? A pedigree is a type of nationality that is uh, gene, okay. genetic. A genetic DNA type. What's, what's a pedigree? Come on, Gad. What's a pedigree? It's a genetic. I don't even know what it is. Y'all ever heard about um, dog food pedigree? No. Yeah, the dog food. Yeah, why do they call it pedigree? It's, it's genetic, dog. sir. Y'all, you ever watch a dog show? <laughs> and they announced the pedigree of the dog before they walked out yeah. on the I need, I That means they announced the what of that dog? That's, that's yeah. His bloodline. Yeah. Who his father was. His father might have been a show dog just like him, right? Yeah. Really? So, now that you understand that pedigree means your lineage or your bloodline. Oh. Right? Let's read. Start from tough. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second yeah. month. And they declared their pedigrees. Uh -huh. After their families, uh -huh. by the house 
of their fathers. So the reason I brought this scripture out is so everybody understands you are what your father is. That's what the Bible says. That's what God says. So if my, if my father is Judah and my mother is Chinese, what am I? Asian American. No. no. I'm Judah. Judah. If my father is Gad I'm learning. and my mother is a so-called Edomite, which is so which is, which was, was, is an Edomite, which is a so-called white man, what am I? Asian. I'm Gad. You are what your father is. Because who, who, who plants the seed? Who plants the seed? Who does the planting? Let me put it that way. The man does the planting, right? I who does the receiving? One question. minute. The mother. the mother receives. The mother receives, the father plants. Yeah. The father receives the seed, right? Yeah. Right. Read it. Read it again. Now and, listen carefully. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. Uh -huh. And they declared their pedigree. Their lineage, their bloodlines, read. Yeah. After their families. By their own families. By the house of their Fathers, you are what your father is, right. and nothing else. Right. Amen. No, no matter Amen. how dark your skin is or how light your skin is, Amen. you are what your father is. That's right. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. 